To work with formulas in Excel, you need to know how to enter data. In this lesson, you learn to build formulas with the Auto Sum button and copy formulas with the Fill handle. We need to add some data to this worksheet. When we're finished, it will look like this. We've entered two labels, totals in cell A15 and in cell C18, average gross pay. Labels are entries that contain text and numerical information not used in calculations. They help you identify data, but they don't have any effect on calculations. In cell C13, we've edited this value to update the overtime hours. Values are numbers, formulas, and functions that can be calculated. In cell B15, we've built a formula to total the hours worked by all employees. Then, we copied that formula to give us totals for all these columns. Let's get started. In step 1, I'll click cell A15. Then, I'll click in the formula bar. And down in the status bar, you'll notice that the mode indicator now reads Edit, indicating that we're in edit mode. In step 2, in the formula bar, I'll type totals. Then I'll click this check mark, which is the enter button. You always need to accept your entry before Excel adds it to the worksheet. Clicking the enter button is one easy way to do that. Excel recognizes this entry as a label because I typed text instead of numbers, so the label is left aligned by default. If the entry is a number or a formula, Excel right aligns it by default. In step 3, I'll click cell B15. We want to enter a formula here that gives us a sum of all the regular hours worked by Quest employees. Given what we've learned so far, we could create a formula like this, equals B5 plus B6 plus B7, and so on, until we entered all the cell addresses for this column. But there's an easier way. In step 4, on the Home tab, in the Editing group, I'll click the Auto Sum button. Excel adds a formula in the formula bar, equals sum B5 through B14. The word sum is a function. A function is a built-in formula that comes with Excel. You'll work more with functions in the next unit, but using a simple one, like sum, gives you a sneak peek into how useful these tools are. Next to the name sum is the suggested range, B5 through B14. In step 5, I'll click the Enter button, and the sum, 378, appears in cell B15. In step 6, I'll click cell C13. I'll type a new number, 6, and then to accept my entry, I'll press the Enter key on the keyboard. Like using the Enter button on the formula bar, pressing the Enter key accepts your entry, and it also moves the cell pointer down one row. In Step 7, I'll click cell C18. I'll type Average Gross Pay. Then I'll press Enter. The contents appear to spill into the cell to the right, but that's just because there's no content in that cell. All of the data is actually contained in cell C18. In step 8, I'll click cell B15, and I'll position the pointer in the lower right corner of the cell, on this fill handle. I know I've selected it when the pointer changes to this thin plus sign. Then I'll drag the fill handle to cell G15, and I'll release the mouse button. Dragging the fill handle across a range of cells copies the contents of the first cell into the other cells. So each filled cell now contains a formula that sums the range of cells above. And in step 9, I'll save my work. To try these steps yourself and see some helpful tips, and to learn more about navigating through a worksheet, turn to page Excel 8 in your book.